Morning, it's Monday, it is 6 a.m. Monday started well, had confirmation from a designer that they would like to meet up for a chat. I have been chasing them since January 2022, which, believe it or not, is two years ago. So yeah, stick with it, persistence is key. I will, I'll get you guys following along today, we're gonna go out to a site, and yeah, just keep getting better at pulling a camera out and not being so rubbish when I'm on it. I haven't made it out to site. I've been getting a new project ready that we're starting tomorrow, which is going to be a good one. So I'm at the yard at the moment. Well, I'm just doing some final checks. So we've got our three ton Bobcat loaded up, ready to go. And then also we have only happy showing you these because they're leaving the yard tomorrow and then not coming back to this yard ever. So don't try it. We've got our little Bobcat going out, our little Mercerci, our little Dumper going out. The little Takuchi is not going out tomorrow, but will be going out on another project shortly. So what, what am I actually doing? I am giving them all a bit of a wipe down, checking they're all running okay, making sure they're all full of diesel and then greasing them up. So Digger obviously did not have diesel in it. Does the dumper. Oh, no, <laughs> of course it doesn't. Next challenge, moving the Land Rover. Is it actually gonna start? Oh, oh. Oh, for sake. Oh, hey. So almost successful. I have the keys for two out of the three machines. Just moving the Land Rover. Got to move that, then go home, get in the office and find the keys for the last digger. So the guys have all been busy whilst I've been behind the scenes again. Matt's on his way to see a second new job of the day. Jake has also been to see two new jobs today. So that's two landscaping, two maintenance. Quoting pretty aggressively. It's taking up a lot of time for everyone at the moment, which is frustrating but that's that's just part of it all the guys at our gomshaw project are just wrapping up half of them are going to be pulling off that onto the new project in the morning still finding it tricky to pull out a camera and just just talk some of that's probably a bit of a mindset thing but it's been it's been going really well so far so we've got we've got two videos out at the time of recording first video's got 300 views and channel's got 55 subscribers i think that's pretty good this week we have got some cool content coming some cool content opportunities once i'm done here i have the very exciting job of going to look at some paint samples for our new offices which are finally being delivered on friday which is so cool but now i'm back at the yard to try and get into the big digger again thought process right now i'm walking over to the digger i'm going to check that it actually opens and then put diesel in it do people want to see that uh -huh. Yeah, buddy. Let's check the air filters. Good thing I decided to do this the day before. Big Digger's battery's dead. Plan is try and get it on a trickle charge so it's good to go for tomorrow. Now I just need to find where on earth the battery is on this thing. When you open the rear bonnet, yeah. uh, it should be directly in front of you. Right, okay. Uh, looking, at this, looking at this photograph. <laughs> Blimey, all right. What I'm going to do, I'll run out into the workshop and ask one of my guys, what's your name? Ollie. Another good reason I decided to check today is uh, <sighs> there's not much air in that either. This afternoon really was just one of those Digger's battery was dead, the pickup truck's battery was dead. Coincidentally, at the weekend, my car's battery was also dead. Other machines hadn't been left at the yard as they should. They weren't full of diesel, they weren't greased up. They were sort of borderline clean enough. I know it's a bit of a pain to have to do an implement, but we have to send our machines out clean, you know, they need to go to start, like we're starting a new job tomorrow, you can't send dirty machines there. I'm on my way now to our monthly cluster meeting for the APL, so the Association of Professional Landscapers. Running a business in any industry feels very lonely and it's a great opportunity to sit down with all the other sort of local company directors, designers, industry professionals, a few suppliers turn up as well and yeah, just have a good and a whinge about everything. It's 10 past 10. Why am I at the yard? I needed to check that that digger's battery was charging. The voltage has gone up, so it should be good to run tomorrow. Obviously, the only issue now is the fact that I've got a flat tire on the trailer. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Can you see me? Can you see me now? You've got a deed for buying Marcus Bro. Right, Thanks, mate. Okay. Bye. Yes, bye. Cool. 
Oh, do I need microphones or anything? Oh, I've got one. Oh, wow. First day, new project. As you can see, a very blank canvas. Lots of little exciting zones in this garden. There's going to be lots of planting, which is great. Nice lighting scheme to complement all of that. There's a dinosaur statue going in, which is very exciting. We've also got an outdoor gym. The material palette is some composite decking. We've got some porcelain patterned mosaic tiles and then a really lovely Jura beige limestone for all, of the, for all of the natural stone paving. So that's all going to be laid in a brick bond and sealed. Yeah, really nice job for us actually. We're also doing the driveway, but that's just a bit of a refresh. So we're actually, we're reusing the gravel that's there now, but we are just regrading it. Nice new base, stabilization grids, new edging, new hedging, new fencing. So yeah, making it a nicer version of, of what it currently is. 10 to 12 weeks on this one, hopefully. There's still a few things that we need to confirm so we're having a new pergola that's being spec by a structural engineer so we need to wait for his reports to come back but this existing structure over us is all coming down and all coming out we're letting lots more light into the client's house the new pergola that's coming on has got a big glass skylight on it as well so that'll let lots of light through so yeah this is day one right at the beginning we'll be following following along the whole way through how are you on camera sam yeah. do you want to do this one uh -huh. matt can do it come back we're in Gomshaw now, so second sight of the day. Pretty much there on everything that we can do that isn't weather dependent. It is freezing. There's a couple of bits of pointing we can't finish. We can't do the resin surfacing. But otherwise, all looking really good. So the guys are just having a bit of a tidy up and getting everything off site that we don't need here anymore. And then, yeah, when the weather's a little bit fairer, we'll be back to wrap things up. Matt, thoughts? Yeah, it's all, it's all starting to come together, really. It's been a fairly challenging project in terms of levels. Some lovely aspects to the job, stonework, the cedar fencing. Yeah, it's really coming together. Hughes designed this project. It's one of, our, one of the local designers that we are lucky enough to work with. How do you think it's gone so far? What are the, any, any sort of key takeaways? How have we been to deal with? Easy to deal with, if I'm honest, because it's the communication that's important between you and I and your team. I think also attention to detail has been fantastic and the finish is just really bang on, actually. Uh, so yeah, I think it's all in the planning. If I show I trust you, yeah. you show you trust me, then that kind of sets the clients at ease. We were probably the third company to quote for yeah. this one over a fairly drawn out process. Yeah. How did sort of our quote compare to the others and you know why do you think we ended up? I think you ended up winning it. Up winning it because your quote was realistic. That's essentially why, whereas other quotes were, came in cheaper, one of them certainly came in cheaper, but actually the quality of their build was nowhere near hardwood landscapes. Landform, cold January's day. Let's go find Mark. Afternoon. Yeah, good. Just admiring your very smart lorry. Trophy Central, basically. I did some work at McLaren, and if you go to McLaren headquarters, everybody who uses a canteen has to walk down this, this avenue of trophies. OK. And it's, it's significant, as yeah. you can imagine, because they've kept it since 1960. Yeah. And it's just that feeling. It just basically reminds the whole team what it's all yeah, about. Yeah. Uh, these, are quite, these are pretty. These are Tudor roses, which yeah, are, are, really, are really, really cool. We've got a couple of them. I've got, yeah, I've got another one there. Barley wards, and then obviously certain things that are quite old school. Yeah. But some of them mean an awful lot. Yeah. So this is. I mean, obviously, this is this is a, a commercial garden. So it's okay. wildlife. It's a lot of a lot of burying. It was this used to be an old nursery building um, built in the 50s when okay. this was one of the biggest nurseries in southern England. And when we came here, it was old crittle windows. And we've been here about 10, 12 years. Yeah. And the reason really we like it is, A, because it's on the motorway links, it's Thames Corridor, yeah. and we've got Arctic access, and it's, it's right in the thick of it all. But literally, this was all overgrown. So we, wow. we've, we've invested an awful lot of time and effort and money. You know, we've got obviously wash bay, fuel yeah. bays. Um, what do you think of these PID systems? That's something that we've looked at for Fantastic. Our, for it's not going to stop you getting broke into. We've got a normal camera yeah. system everywhere and everything's lit. Yeah. But basically that is monitored. If people know, then the cavalry's coming. Yeah. Because there's no way you can trigger that off. Yeah, I mean, it's, this is, it's, a, it's a simple yard. So I've got a full-time mechanic fitter, basically services everything. We keep everything really, really tight. So we run about 30, 35 vans. So that's the only HGV that we've got. And that's a big investment, but it's really designed. It's designed for London work. Yeah. So it'll carry the biggest piece of equipment we need. Okay. So it's got a five ton ramp, it'll carry up to eight tons, it'll, it'll yeah. payload. But the crane will lift a ton at 12 metres. It's got a winch on it so I can pull dead equipment on. But it's got all the bells and whistles, air suspension. So image to us is, is, is everything. Yeah. 
It's absolutely everything. A Vance, your loader choice. So I've got, I've got four Vance. Yeah. I've got two 860s, and I've got a 7.5 and a, and a smaller one. OK. We've got, we've got telehandlers, and I operate up to six ton. So yeah. I've got uh, six ton, then we've got three ton, ton and a half, tiny baby ones but that that w i bought this for the tower of london it's for super bloom i remember I, I seeing it on, on instagram yeah i did and and honestly what a, what a tool that is yeah yeah it's a bit of a toy cupboard in there that's my that's a catering under there yeah a very nice room and a couple, a of, couple bikes. of bikes like all all the vans typically a, a, a renault citroen yeah. or this type of platform but you'll notice that they're all the same on the side whether the maintenance or whether they're actually construction but every yeah. van is different on the back the image is it started with picking pick an image that, that that particular foreman had built okay oh that's a nice yeah touch. so then so the, the the feeling that the the guys actually had ownership of the of the van and yeah. felt proud of it so we get a lot of work from our vans every yeah. van is slightly different one sort of idea that we we thought about which you know hopefully is fairly in line with what you've just said about you know being at a stage in your career where you're wanting to give back what we'd like to do and obviously you're the you're, you're our, our first choice we came up with a bit of an idea saying you know we could have almost have like an ask mark feature yeah, which, yeah no absolutely um, well, i think i think where i'm at i'm at, i'm kind of a senior statesman with the industry i think a lot of people can relate to me yeah i think i'm accessible and i think i'm known for just saying as it is and, and i'm happy to talk about it and share about it and yeah and equally when things go wrong say where they go wrong oh, it's all, yeah, it's all, it's all part of it isn't it at the yeah. end of the day i cut across quite a few camps i'm respected yeah. by the designers and, and the commercial landscapes the commercial builders yeah. but also the residential yeah. so i've been around a long long time doing it but i still you know i still love it i still get excited about it i mean our business is as you'd expect it to be after so long yeah. you'd expect it to be pretty well oiled and it is yeah, it yeah is, absolutely it is, it is pretty well oiled i like the sound of it we'll just we'll walk through the office and you can film the office this is where all the work's done afternoon mm -hmm. this is ollie and team catherine heads up the design oh, yeah. department yeah we're being treat, treated to the, the grand tour yeah just give so. them the tour and you're the, you're the first office he's taken us into so yeah obviously exactly. the most, most important it's the most important so all the money's made in here <laughs> this is where all the money's lost in this one and then this is operation side you see now this is this is actually um, it's not carpeted, so the lads are encouraged to come in. That's a first roof garden, one of the big first commercial roof gardens in, in wow. central London. That's number one poultry, right up in the Bank of England. That won us the Grand Award for Barley Grand Award in wow. 1998. Yeah, I mean, it's good to see them. It, all, it just makes you feel old looking at them. What a portfolio. Ev everyone tells a story. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Uh, anyway, have a seat and I'll get, some, I'll, get, I'll get a brew on. What can I get everybody? Dogs in the office as well. We've got a lot of dogs. We've got a lot of dogs. Yeah, there you oh, go. Wow. You've got wagon wheels. It's, uh, no, it's, it de-stresses the office and it's, it's great. So yeah. I keep a happy little ship here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. For an RHS show, you described the mood you're in determines like, the kind of garden you're creating. <laughs> so what determines? Your mood. So for me now, when I'm designing a garden, say for at Chelsea, is, is, is quite clear. I don't regard it as a garden. So I'm creating this, this theatrical production with plants. Whether you're designing a garden to represent the Wensleydale landscape, whether it's a, a canal industrial landscape or a desert landscape, is I start with thinking about mood and what mood and what's, what's the soul of the garden. And as I said, if I now regard them as theatrical, and that's what people, the show gardens, people come to the show to be wowed, to be transported. The suspension of belief is, is parted. So that I, I think about it like that. And I like to frustrate the public. I like to put things in the way that the public get frustrated, they can't see, and it moves them round. So I play with the public. So I play with perspective. You know, I'm, am I a world-class designer? No, I'm not known as that but I can design and I can put a show garden together like the nobody else. That is my kind of forte. Building show gardens is in the DNA of me and thankfully my company. It's a whole different game. I trained at Wisley a long, long time ago. Back in the day, we used to be bussed up to Chelsea as students, I was 20, 20, 21, and I walked into RHS Chelsea Flowers Show, I was like, whoa. And I little did I know what, what a massive significant part of my life it would become. So that was in 82. My first Chelsea garden was in 88, and I've been there every year, every year since. We're, probably, we're, we're certainly the most meddled garden builder of the 21st century, without a shadow of a doubt. I like that adrenaline buzz I get to, to deliver something in such a, a punishing timescale, to deliver it to a world-class standard. 
and then photograph it, video it, interview wall to wall to wall to wall, and then done. You know, there's a big thing to dumb it down. I should put a price cap on. How can these garments cost a million pounds? Yeah. Don't dumb it no, down. The... This is the catwalk, and yeah. things will filter down. Yeah. And you know, where you see something on a catwalk you'd never wear, but that elements of that fashion will come into the mainstream. Yeah, absolutely. But what you find out about yourself is, can you get yourself out of the scrapes? Massive learning curves, and you, you then you get guys who just really step up to it. You can get intel yeah. on, on and things that I will take home, you know, yeah. take, take to our business. But it, is, it is terrifying, and the bottom line is, if you mess up, commercial yeah. suicide. How, how are we going to make us a, an attractive prospect? You're doing it already because I didn't know you from Adam. Mm. And I did a social media post when you were doing that Polish, Polish concrete on the David. The terrazzo, yeah. terrazzo, yeah. So yeah, so we did the resin surfacing. Exactly, oh, but true. I mean yeah. that was a you know anybody who's putting something in situ and letting it cure off and then polishing it in situ is, you know, you got some you know gonad on mm. And I actually picked up and I did a social media post on it because I thought I don't know these guys. Look at this, it's bloody great. This is what it's about. Start small, start humble, and and get in because that you, you made an impression. This industry, for me, is like a baby that you, you put the baby down and you walk out of the room and cry. It's got too many moving parts to, to be a really profitable, make masses of money out of it. Yeah. It's bespoke, it's got lots of moving parts, but, you know, for some of our clients who are, who are on screens printing money, mm. it's, not that kind of, it's never that kind of business. And so landform as we as we know it now, when that was conceived, what did it look like? Okay, so I suppose going back to so 2003, Landmark Design and Build, which are those awards up there, that was a premier company. It was an eight million pound company back in 2002, mm. but we had one real client, really one bad client. He's got a, a bad reputation as rolling people over, and I, we got rolled by him. He stopped paying me in April. 2003 and I was heading towards the iceberg and I was on the ship and the steering wheel was locked and the ice field was coming ahead yeah. in September. Ice field being that quarter, tax quarter and everything was coming to a head like that. What do we do? Yeah. What do I do? We had cash in the bank, not enough to pay £700,000 VAT bill and tax bill in September and we were just heading towards it. So. You know, I've got good people around me. Okay, it's a good time to pack a lifeboat. That's yeah. what we did. Packed a lifeboat, appointed a, a liquidator, controlled explosion, hit the iceberg in September. It sank like a stone. Nobody knew. It wasn't, it wasn't a trail of destruction. We paid off discreetly all the little guys. Mm. The big PLCs got hit. That man got hit. And, and a couple of big suppliers. But I never fell out with anybody. Yeah. So I never moved it, I didn't rebrand it. It was ultimately my fault, because I took the contract on. Ultimately, I never blamed anybody but myself. That job above your head was the first job I built in new company. As Landform. As Landform, that Fantastic. was 2004. And it's probably one of the most iconic pieces of work. I made a load of money on that. The telephone never rang. No, nobody selling me things. I had no trade. I had no I had nothing, and I was at the top of the top of the pile in 2003. And overnight, I went right from the pinnacle of the snow-covered caps right down, with my head in the in the in the water. RHS, a bit of smell, Mark. Go away. Yeah. So all the committees, all the, and I never moved, I never ran away, I never dipped. One interesting story from a company that I still work with this day, a company called Atgro. This guy said, I need to come and see you. I thought, here we go, you know, I get bruised here. And he said, look, he says, this is an irritation. Yeah. It's not a problem. He said, I lost my son when he was 12 years old. He said, he said that's a problem. He said, for 12 years, you've given my, you know, my family and my business a lot of money and you, you've been good and you've hit a, a problem. I just want to say, look, we're good and we're going to carry on. And I said, look, can you put on 5%? I, I owed him not a huge amount, but you've got to be really careful when a business collapses, you've got preferential creditors, and why have you paid him, not paid him? So I owed him a couple of grand. And I said, look, just stick on 10%. No, 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 none of that. I'm not embarrassed to talk about it because it happened and it's all right talking to press when, when things are good and it's really buoyant and you're very honest about it, but when, when things go wrong, oh, we don't want to talk about that. It happened. It really happened, and that's why I think a lot of people respect. I fell off the bike, grazed myself badly, get back on the bike, and that's what I did. So I packed a life raft, 
and started paddling, yeah. it was fantastic because there was no noise, Amazing. just pure focus. So you, you took some key members with you? Yes, I did. Matt, who you met, and a lot of new people here now, but there's people that go back to mm. those days. And sadly, we couldn't take everybody with us. And also learn is that sticking your head in the sand, ignoring yeah. stuff, solves nothing at all. You know, the people look and say, Mike Green's got the Midas touch. Uh, I've, I've, you know, I've made some howlers, I've, I've made some mistakes, and that being one of them. Well, you know, even at a, at a very different scale, seeing how close it can... You run out of cash end. very, very quickly. And as I said to you now, my biggest thing is risk management. Yeah. Risk, w working out the risk to the business. Can I build it? Yes, I can build it. I can mm. build anything. Can I build it in the time? Can I build it on that soil? Can I build it on that slope? Do I want to do that job? Yeah. Do I like this person? Do I trust this person? And then I'll say, no, it's not for us, yeah. walk away. And I think it's best if I look at the work. I don't get it right every time. I mean, there's some things that get around me or past me and you get a feeling. And so I can talk to the ground workers on site. I can talk to the scaffolders. Hey, oh, guys, are you all right? How's this job? Is it all right? Oh, like, this guy, yeah. look at that mess. Yeah. You see the husbandry on the site, you think, we're going to get a hard time yeah. here. You know, my advice to any, any, any smaller companies is the, managing the risk is a significant part of successful landscaping. So imagine being in my position. So I've got a nine operational staff, so mm -hmm. full-time employed. Yeah. We've got an office manager who's fantastic. We've just started maintenance. Which is a great move. Business-wise, we need that consistent cash flow that doesn't come yeah. with the builds. We're about £650,000 yeah. turnover. Yeah. So little operation. Yeah. We are moving into our new yard. We've upgraded our office space to accommodate everyone who has an office. So my landscaping manager, maintenance manager, myself, office manager. We want everyone to be together when mm -hmm. we're working. And then we've got our main storage areas. You'll have to come see it one day once yeah. it's actually in, yeah, in yeah. motion to, to see to what you that. think. But I think I'm of, envious. Our scale. <laughs> yeah. I'm envious. Do you know what I'm envious? We can, we can swap well, because for a you, bit. Just, you start on the journey and my journeys towards the end and I'm kind of envious that you're starting yeah. yours. What enabled you to actually scale without just becoming a busy lunatic? I mean I think I think you've done some really fundamentally really sound things. So having the maintenance mm. really early on in your journey is strong. I mean our maintenance is about 1.6 million in yeah. sales but it's very saleable. Yeah. So what is the exit? What is your exit? How do you sell hardwoods? How do you get out? Yeah. You know, how do you, what do you sell? Metals on a wall and a couple of old diggers, you know, even yeah. for us. But the maintenance is you, you sell contracts. Yeah. And uh, so I think from, from a business point of view, it's very, very good. Yeah. Also, anything I buy, I buy through the maintenance company. So I run two separate companies. Yeah. I run Landform Maintenance and Landform Consultants. And Landform Consultants is the high risk element. So I could have another potential really bad debt mm. that could hit, hit me under the waterline but they won't be able to take all the trucks, all the diggers, all, all yeah, the stuff. Yeah, so spreading that liability. So we buy under landform maintenance and then we charge it across. I would say, don't put your eggs in one basket. Don't run before you can walk, which you've already done that anyway. You'd pass that, yeah. but actually to really analyse the risk on the yeah. business, live by the code. You know, the three things, mm. you know, is it going to be fun? If it's fun, you'll enjoy it and the whole team will enjoy it. Can you dine out on it? And yeah. can you make money from it? Yeah, absolutely. And, and those are the three things. If you go by those three things, then I don't think you're going to be a million miles away. What you're doing now, the social media and the YouTube channels, all those, they weren't around when I Yeah. We barely had mobile phones. So it, it's, a, it's an exciting time. I get it completely. But I think you're doing the right things. Yeah. I genuinely do think you're doing the right thing. The property side, I read with interest because I think that is a, a logical fit. It's one of the biggest aims is making sure that this year we really try and pin down our finances. We've been in such aggressive growth that ev so everything is reinvested. Yeah. It's very feast or famine with the contracts, so we're lacking that consistency in cash flow. So it's actually looking at it as a wider business model combined with the maintenance. And then also putting pulling media into it and seeing yeah. what can we do. It's an interesting you know. dynamic. I, th I think it's really interesting. If I was doing it now, it's a whole different game. It's something that if I was in your stages, I would be. And you know, it's a brave move to to obviously invest time and energy into this, and it's, it, it's an investment for you. We do want younger companies to look at us, almost as I do with you, but what we also want is that to be paired with, oh yeah, but we know how they got there, and mm. we know what it took to get there. Mm. 
Mm. So when they're in this frustrating, perhaps the director's still on site full time and is struggling to get the, the office time needed to actually really grow a company. We're in a world where, you know, there's laptop money, there's fast money, but yeah. there's a lack yeah. of sort of asset dependent business yeah. documenting. Something that we battle with every single job we quote, you know, it's the lack of licensing in, in the industry and, um, you know, what, yes. we're, what we're sort of Completely. up against. So, Completely. There's a lot of landscapers that do very well on platforms like Instagram where they make short form content, time lapse videos of laying a patio and this is how we do it and this is how you should do it. What they often get is they get a big following and then the comment section on those posts is just a battle. It's just a complete war. So you know, you're doing it wrong. No, you're charging too much. No, you can't do that. And then a client saying, how on earth can you charge people that? And then it's another client saying, oh, I actually think that's quite, and it's just, <laughs> it's just absolute carnage. Hopefully it gives clients, you know, access to seeing what goes on in a a company that is licensed and that is part of the APR network and that does take its staff seriously, it does take its development seriously, that's ambitious for growth. Good. If we can provide that transparency and we can grow this channel just a little bit to get in front of the right people that make them go, yeah, we have got a couple of quotes, but it didn't quite sit right with these guys and the quote's not that detailed and, you know, I've asked some technical questions and they were just a little bit wishy-washy. Or we've got these guys that it was a big jump up in price, but we feel we really understand what mm. we're getting. Mm. And now actually we've looked them up and we can see Mm. how they deliver projects, mm. how the back end works, yeah, you know, the effort that they Absolutely. make. Absolutely, 100%, 100% right. I've, I've got so much, I've got so yeah. many things to impart. It would be great to catch before we leave is, is like I said, just a very, just very just brief. Barrel. Hi, I'm Mark Gregory, I'm Managing Director of Landform. It's great to have Ollie here from Harwood uh, Landscapes. We've been a bit of a tour about our operation here and i um, be working with Ollie and the team on his YouTube channel and explaining all things about landscaping. So I'm really looking forward to it, really exciting. It's a new venture for me. So I'll see you soon. It's just Thursday evening and I'm just grabbing a bit of office time. But yeah, what have we been up to? A little new job started today and then our new bigger project that started. The guys have been there just cracking on with that. So I have been working on some commercial projects. This is something that's new for us, something that we want to do more of. It comes with its own set of challenges, but had a great conversation with, with Mark Gregory from Landform yesterday and, and hearing his perspective on, on commercial projects and projects that come with financial penalties for overrun was actually pretty inspiring. So yeah, definitely something we're going to be looking at. We pretty much do everything in-house, but for some of these big roadways, civils type work, we are reaching out to subcontractors. So I'm working with a local civils company. They've been great, super efficient with the quoting. They seem to really want the job. So yeah, so far great to deal with. The second project I'm looking at is is we've been asked to look at the landscaping for a new build development. Our quote and the team that we assigned to it obviously need to be very commercially minded. So rather than being in the domestic designer led sector where we're looking where we can add value and make projects really lovely, high end, get as much time allocation as we can to do a really high end finish, working very closely with, with a private client. This project we need to look at how efficiently and effectively we can deliver the contract. There's so much development locally that yeah, I think it'd be an insane opportunity to miss. And I still haven't got that digger fixed. Morning, it's delivery day. Finally taking delivery of our new offices. So we've got two site cabins going in. So they're 32 foot by 10 foot. It's nice big units. We're having two of them stacked on top of each other. I've got the top, everyone else is downstairs. Everyone being in the same building, essentially. Everyone working together. It's gonna to be such a vital part of streamlining everything that we do. It does does mark day one. I mean, the, the whole thing is likely gonna be about an 18 month process. Offices going in and then there's a, one of the existing barns is being refurbished. So all of our it's going to be based there, um, which is great. So we'll have our yard and office facility together. Wow, look at that. It's not bad, is it?